But when the excessive candida overgrowth is contributing to that all the time, this is what can lead to like autoimmune diseases. You know how you have all these health issues and you can't figure out what it is. You tried so many things and you're just not getting any better. Well, it might be candida. Candida is very common and it can greatly affect you systemically. So many health complications can be linked back to candida being the root cause. Now in this video, I'm gonna explain what candida is and how it affects you. I'm not gonna go into treatment because that is out of the scope of this video. There's a lot of complexities to it and you have to be safe with what you're doing. But having a little bit more understanding of candida can maybe help take you down a better route in addressing your health complication. So I'll try to keep this as simple as possible, but what candida is, is it's a fungus. And probably the easiest way to contract an overgrowth of candida is immune suppression. As soon as that immune system becomes suppressed, candida can thrive. Now it's important to understand that candida is supposed to be in your body. It's just the overgrowth that leads to these health complications. A big place for candida as well as hospitals. This is why a lot of people after they've had surgery fall ill or take a long time to recover because they very well could have contracted candida. So one thing to understand is that candida is tricky and when it comes to treating it because not only is it a double wall cell, but it also contains what we could say is very sticky biofilms. Now biofilms is that protective plaque that protects these organisms. And the longer you have it, the more difficult it's going to be to break apart those biofilms to expose that organism. Candida also has virulence factors, so meaning virus-like symptoms, and itself will also also kill immune cells, suppressing the immune system even further. But it can also activate a side of the immune system known as TH17. And in simple terms, that's a catabolic phase of the immune system. But when the excessive candida overgrowth is contributing to that all the time, this is what can lead to like autoimmune diseases because the immune system starts constantly attacking your own tissue. Another big issue with candida is it really destroys that gut lining. So this is where we hear things about like leaky gut, for example. So not only do we have the gut line integration, but think of it as like it plants roots and these roots act as transporters for other bad bugs. So this is where we can see an increase of what is known as opportunistic bacteria overgrowth within the GI tract. Once again, contributing to like more inflammation and more toxins produced because candida can produce a lot of toxins. So this is where when we talk about people being toxic riddled, it doesn't just mean from your drinking water, from your shampoos, from your beauty products, etc. that root cause could be candida, just constantly producing toxins. Toxins. So if we're talking about candida overgrowth within the GI tract, we're going to be looking at symptoms such as gas and bloating, abdominal pain, constipation and diarrhea, acid reflux, indigestion, and like food intolerances and insensitivities. And then when we talk about it being systemic, we're looking at sugar cravings. And this probably relates to a lot of people. We know so many people that get sugar cravings. And that is because candida can alter your brain chemistry to say, feed me sugar, because that's what's ultimately going to really help candida grow. And this is where we also see a lot of brain fog, a lot of fatigue, where we have trouble losing weight. And you can actually see like a lot of skin conditions due to candida, like eczema or just skin inflammation in general. Also very common for females is vaginal yeast infections, but we'll also see things like joint and muscle pain and definitely a lot of psychological things like anxiety, depression, mood swings, we'll even get headaches. A lot of times too, what you'll see is IBD, you'll see things like asthma, so airway allergies, so even like nasal congestion. As mentioned, we can see autoimmunity and things like celiac disease. So and again, Again, ultimately immune suppression is what leads to candida usually, but this also includes things like antibiotic usage, medications, processed diets, where it leads to damage to the mucosa lining, chronic high carbohydrate diets, lack of stomach acid or pancreatic enzymes, alcohol consumption is a big one, and even e-cigarettes. And it's important to know that co-infections are quite common. So even like your partner and your pet, you can contract candida from them. And one of the reasons we'll see things like heartburn, acid reflux is because candida and H. pylori have a mutualistic relationship. So they tend to live together. So if you see H. pylori somewhere, you can probably guarantee you have candida because candida can be very hard to actually find in like stool tests and whatnot. So this is why I recommend an organic acid test because it's going to test the metabolite that candida produces. But the only way a stool test is going to pick up candida is if it was in the colon that day you had that bowel movement. So although I said we're not going to talk about treatment, I will talk about what you can do to not feed further into candida. And so this is doing things like avoiding processed foods, especially high 
high carbohydrates. And yes, fruit is very healthy, but let's avoid excessive fruit in this situation. Watch out for high mold, high fungus foods, and alcohol is a big one that because that ethanol will feed that candida. And on that subject, that's where people like who can't handle their alcohol or they feel drunk. It's because candida will produce acetyl aldehyde, which is what alcohol produces, leading to that drunk behavior. So make sure you're eating lots of leafy greens. You could try fermented foods, definitely have an abundance of healthy fats, and make sure you're eating quality protein. Remember, when it comes to eradicating candida, it is very tricky. This is something that I work with all the time. So if you're interested, drop a comment, send a DM, and I'd be more than happy to discuss how we can move forward with eradicating your candida overgrowth. Thank you.